times you said you made a happening, not a festival. This is a happening. This is something that's beyond the festival, and we're so grateful to be part of it. There seems to be a genuine love of music here, but there also seems to be like a care for the people who are making it happen. And I think that that's important. They are connoisseurs of, 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 of music and this kind of music, uh, which kind of separates this festival from, from many other festivals. And it's not like other festivals like where everyone's like a headliner it's like a bunch of big bands I, I don't know you get a lot of bands that you would never heard of and you go give them a shot and yeah you're grateful that you listen to them because now you have a new favorite band kind of thing people travel from all over the world to be here uh, that's just a really it's a really powerful thing and that was a very remarkable edition very remarkable this year There's this specific link with all these different artists and I think then it's not something where it's specifically focused on guitar but I think it's more this spirit I think which is there because you can find the spirit in the music of these extremes then finally are very closely linked <clears throat> either with heaviness or intensity and, and also kind of darkness as well. But a good, a positive darkness. The thing that I've always thought was extra cool about Road Verde is that it's, um, it seems to be very focused on the artistic side of things. Not that other festivals focus, you know, hard on other sides of things, but I just like looking out the window right now, there's, there's something going on that's not just about being um, more, more something than someone else, not about having, you know, more heavy metal cred or more whatever. <laughs> Roadburn, out of festivals, it's, it's really the place to go to because the art is in the center and, and uh, you don't have to compromise that much in terms of the artistic expressions and, and production is, is fantastic and uh, yeah. I, I want Roadburn to thrive on creativity. I want to offer bands a, a, a platform where they can excel. I, I want bands to feel comfortable at Roadburn. The moment they come in, they, they need to feel like, hey, everything is running smooth, everything is well organized. Probably the greatest production and greatest crew that there is. So it's, um, it's, it's so comfortable. I can sit back and relax and completely focus on my show. But I, because I think if a band can focus on a show like and feeling completely at ease, they will play the best show of their lives or they will excel in what, at what they do. And like the audience will benefit from it so much. I don't know Walter very well, but he introduced himself to me last night and there's something very fucking cool yeah. about somebody who has been doing it for 17 years and is just as excited as the first day probably. <laughs> it's like a little bit infectious. So, so I am a Walter fan and um, it speaks volumes about um, like the way that the, the festival plays out here is, is originates with with his spirit I think right and so it's like it's very loving it's just excited to hear good music and there's no politics there's no bullshit there's no uh, 
you can't come in. There's nothing like that. It's very welcoming and, and that's the way it should be. Yeah. And it makes everything easy and fucking cool and everybody's having a good time and there's you, you walk around and you see everybody happy and just watching. Walter is incredibly gracious. I mean, he's so busy and he took the time several times to come up to us and, you know, ask us how it was for us, you know, and you can tell how much he loves this fest and how much he, he cares about what everybody's experience is. When I met him the first time last year in person, you know, and I was just a festival goer, he said, you know, how are you liking the festival? Are you having a good time? You know, who have you seen that you want? I mean, that's really, it's pretty, pretty special. It was like a different a different festival compared to the other years. We had, of course, the new venues, Koepel Hall, Hall of Fame, and beforehand I didn't know how that would fit into Roadburn, and now I think like, wow, it's like we have so much room to breathe now. It's like there is, like the, the festival is spread out in, 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 into, in, into downtown Tilburg, and it makes everything so relaxed and so smooth. The way it's laid out, it's really, it's really nice, especially this year with the new venues, uh, the Cupel Hall and the Hall of Fame, and having the merch over there, and uh, it's it's really a great opportunity to see a lot of the diverse programming in a really short period of time. People can experience the shows in a way more laid-back setting now, and. And Roadburn was already laid back and everything, but now it's it's because of the the, the different parts where Roadburn is, like O13, and then you you go to the other part of the of downtown and you go to the Koepel Hall. It's 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 just it adds to 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 Roadburn. It seems like the perfect size city center. Um, not too crowded. You can breathe. You can get your own space. Yeah. It feels good, and yeah, having to you know get some exercise and go back and forth to uh, the other venues, Hall of Fame and whatnot. There is the, the ice cream parlor in between, and that became a kind of hub where people people were meeting each other. It didn't even feel that you had to walk. It was like you're walking, and before you know, you're talking to somebody that is walking next to you, and it definitely added up to the to the feel of of world run. Walter approached us, I guess, 10 year anniversary from the Live at Roadburn record coming out in 2008. He just approached us, he wanted to have us back, and then throughout being the artist in residence and having a few special performances uh, to make it a little more, you know, special for ourselves and special for everybody. I am extremely happy with Earthless as artist in residence. Over the course of the festival, they showed what an artist in residence should be at Roadburn. Like, they presented themselves as, as like the trio, like the power trio Earthless, played the album show like a regular show, like where everything is focused on the new album, and then they got into completely new territory with Damo Suzuki and the East Meets West Orchestra, oh sorry, the East Meets West Jam, and that showcased how versatile they are as musicians. I love playing with other people, or we all love playing with other people, so it just makes it different. So not, not the same old thing you would uh, expect from us. With Damo Suzuki, they, they could get into like a more jammy crowd rock territory and playing with this legend that is Damo Suzuki. And with the East meets West Jam, they literally brought like the West Coast San Diego, the West Coast American jam scene together with the new Japanese scene and it merged together in an amazing way. That was so exciting, that East meets West Jam. And I'm so happy that, that Earthless understood the, the, the scope of being an artist in residence. And they did it like amazing. It was amazingly, amazing. Roadrun also needs to ex extend the art part of it, like music and art are like, it belongs really together, it really is, it, it's an extension of what Roadburn is, the art side, and I, I want to do way more when it comes to art and photography, it's, it's so essential uh, for, for the festival, but also for the bands, 
and that will even uh, enhance their uh, roadburn experience more, even more. Here, people really appreciate the uh, the craft and the time and the energy and the, you know. I, not to keep harping on it, but the heart and soul that goes into these things. There's some great art over in the, in the full bleed section, for sure, yeah. All the artists in this room here are all, we're all friends who are connected through uh, burlesque, being the screen printer we all work with, but also we're connected through tattooing, music, artwork, poster art. So we all know each other and uh, friends from that circle, uh, Becky Cloonan did uh, the Robin Art two years ago, uh, John Basie did it last year, Eric did it at least two years pr prior to that. And um, so I've been talking with those guys for a long time. They'd always said, you need to get out to Roburn and you need to check this out. And I never understood what it was, you know? I knew it was a music festival of sorts, but uh, I never quite got it. You know, I didn't understand until like, they were like, you've got to go there to understand it. And I spoke to Becky and Eric and John, and it turned out they'd all individually mentioned to Walter that they, they were saying, maybe you should uh, check out Richie's work. He could be, you know, he could be a good person to pass the torch on to and uh, um, so then that got me in touch with Walter and then uh, I'd gone out last year and spent some time here and got to know everyone and had, had an incredible time of course received a, an email from Walter saying you're the guy for the job now so which is a crazy honor to me because you know even though these guys are my friends I look up to all of these guys as artists and so then to be passed that torch is, uh, is really cool but a big responsibility too. <laughs> Well, I feel that anybody that's a fan of heavy music is also a fan of uh, the visuals and the aesthetics and the character that is developed around it. You know, it's just it's just as important uh, in terms of communicating the ideas of, of a band. Uh, so all of the artists that are part of it are all related in, to the music world in some way. You know, Walter had seen my work, which spans from, you know, some, some of it is full-on heavy metal artwork and some of it is just more uh, decorative and, and uh, the work that he'd actually warmed to and the reason that he wanted me to do it was more for the decorative Art Nouveau influenced softer side of it and uh, he made a point early on, he said, you know, I don't, f for him, what what Roadburn represents isn't um, classic heavy metal iconography. So he was like, I don't want to see a, I don't want to see a single skull in there, you know? No skulls, no uh, death and doom and gloom and, and negativity. I want it to be a celebration. So we agreed to that early on and um, then conceived this idea that we would... Um, originally I was going to make it so that each piece represented a different stage at the event. Some sort of story running through each stage, but then Walter had, He's got such a defined uh, notion of what the festival is, and he said he, he doesn't. He thinks there shouldn't be any definition between the stages. It should be united as one thing. So he suggested maybe we instead we do one to represent each day of the festival instead. So then it gave us this kind of uh, a sort of journey through the weekend. So we took kind of expanded that into a journey through life, and then built a, uh, a story through that. You know, for each piece and each character. I've been trying to think about this in the context of. Most other festivals I've been to, music festivals, heavy music festivals, and I couldn't really imagine this working at most of them. I don't think it would necessarily be the right audience. I don't think people would understand the idea of going and watching music and coming away with this. You know, you, maybe you buy a gig poster, but not uh, this amount of print work and taking such an interest in the artists who are making it. And I think that I had a realization over the weekend from watching a lot of the bands. Most of the bands in in this festival seem to have a visual aesthetic. But none of them are making it as some just ego trip to sell a record. They're always making a, a piece of art fundamentally. And a lot of the bands have got uh, visual backdrops or videos running through their sets and you know very defined uh, a visual identity and aesthetic that is integral to the music. You couldn't separate the two, like Godspeed, you know? You couldn't just have the music without that visual, it's the whole experience. So somehow that seems to extend into this maybe, you know? Yeah, special.
in it. Um, Dave Sweet Apple, I had a hand in it as well as Walter. Again, from my knowledge. I was already talking about it with Dave Sweet Apple, who is part of TP Records and he runs Auto Battery Records. And we were already talking for like three or, three or four years ago, like, hey, what if his Earthless will be at Roadburn? And we have some of these other bands at Roadburn too. Maybe we can do a jam session between a couple of these bands. It was just like a, a small idea, like, and gradually I, we started to fantasize what if everybody, the whole scene would be involved. And we were like, wow, that would be an idea. I went to San Diego two years ago to talk about uh, this whole idea. Some bands were on tour, some bands played. We started to talk and they were also like, hey, let's do it. We had to postpone the idea. And like, I think seven or eight months ago, we started to talk again and then things got, uh, took a tumble and we, we arranged everything and had 26 people flying in from San Diego to Tilburg to partake in the um, San Diego takeover. <laughs> Insane. I'm glad it worked out the way they did, the way it did. Um, they're all great bands and they're good buddies and it's great to be a, in a foreign country together. That doesn't happen every day. I teach guitar and I have taught Brendan, uh, Brendan Deller from Sacramani. I used to give him lessons when he was like 12, 13 years old for years and turn him on to a bunch of bands and I worked at a guitar store in Encinitas and all these, the kids like Dylan and Evan, they'd all come into the guitar shop. I'd yell at them, I'd be hung over and tell them to get the hell out, but it was just funny, it was just a good time. So they've been a part of my life, I've been a part of their life when, since they were kids. So I know there's an influence that goes on with that. Um, so yeah, I guess we have had an influence. But it's, yeah, it's, I don't think about it too much. It's just, it's just fun. artists but most of them like I do the bookings myself like and there is only like three or four bookings I will uh, ask uh, O13 to help out mainly because there is they, they are in touch with the bookings agency or are simply I'm too busy with a couple of projects but let's say 95% I do it myself and I, I really because I want to do it like that because I want to invite these, these bands and artists like personally and tell them why I have picked them for Roadburn and why I think it, they are so special to play the festival. The reason why I've always kind of looked at it as the most interesting of the heavy music festivals is because of that focus on art and the curated aspect to it, which is actually an art word. That's not even like really a music word. I was very intrigued by, by him as, as, as an artist. Achieved great things with Converge. He's an uh, accomplished like fine artist. He has an interesting blog, an interesting podcast about music. And like I had something like, I think he can add something new to Roadburn. And I met him a couple of times here at the festival and he's very nice and very well organized. And also as passionate about music as I think I am. Um, I was introduced to Walter from Roadburn uh, a few years ago and uh, we started talking about potentially having uh, Converge or a Converge related band or a Converge related set happen at Roadburn at some point. Uh, I believe a year or so later we decided to do um, two sets at Roadburn and we did a, um, a special uh, album set for the Jane Doe album that we released in 2001. And we also did a, a set uh, under the name Converge Blood Moon, which is essentially a Converge big band project. And that was our first uh, you know, actual performance uh, experience here, and we really enjoyed it. And really kind of uh, gelled with the spirit of our band and the sort of soul of our band and the, um, just the overall vibe that we like to, to put out. Um, we just felt a, a kinship with not only the audience, but the, you know, the actual promoters themselves. And uh, we just stayed in touch. 
And uh, then Walter reached out again and said, hey, would you like to curate as well, since you are an artist at this wide variety of stuff? I said, sure, sounds exciting. Uh, let's, let's do something. I like a challenge. Anybody who knocks promoters and thinks that they have an easy job is, uh, you know, couldn't be further from the truth. I have a huge admiration and respect for what this festival and what all the festivals do because it's a huge puzzle. Uh, you can have a dream lineup that you would love to have, but it might not be able to happen for a wide variety of reasons, either timing, um, just uh, finances, um, just being at the right place at the right sort of time. So you think you might have something lined up and then it changes. It's just, you know, it, it is what it is. It's the nature of the beast. Uh, I think that we put together something that was diverse, uh, dynamic that uh, expanded the sort of sonic, the, the sonic vibe that's already here for Roadburn. It's already been quite diverse, but we all want to push it a little further if we, if we could, and also uh, pay homage to some of the true pioneers of this world, like with bands like Crowbar and, and uh, Godflesh and things like that. The success of this year's festival is also uh, um, part of, of Jacob Bannon's curation, but also his guidance and. He, uh, I could ask him also like, hey, uh, about like the bands that I was working on. He was an amazing team player. He discussed the, the, the curation very openly, like very to the point. And that, that inspired me so much to actually think a bit outside the box as well. We had two commissioned uh, pieces of music, two, two commissioned projects. It's a, it's a little gift to like these people. We think with uh, giving them a commissioned piece, we can help them like continue to grow as we want to see them as like in the future as being the headliners as we think they are. I decided to uh, ask the Finnish scene to do one, like Orangi Pazuzu and Dark Buddha Rising. That scene burst at the seams with creativity. The, these people are up for doing things uh, uh, outside of the box. The same goes for the Icelandic guys, that whole Icelandic black circle. They are, they are so creative and they are so full of energy and trying to push the genre into like new directions. These two scenes needed to have the uh, commissioned uh, pieces of music. I, I want to see these musicians grow. I, I want Roadburn to be a very small part in their, like, in, in their growth as musicians and performers. They are literally reshaping the Roadburn scenes as we speak. I, I knew that there was about that there was so much creativity in these scenes that these uh, uh, the Finnish as well as the Icelandic uh, musicians they would embrace the idea and they did the proggy kind of like madness of the ways of space orchestra which was like mind blowing to the literally ice cold like bleak black metal uh, assault of, from the Icelandic guys and it was so great to see that they took the opportunity and push them to into new uh, in, into new territory. I'm, I'm so proud, so proud of these guys. I hope that we can actually have the Koepel Hall on Thursday as well next year, so that we have three days, maybe four days, and that we can like develop the, the, the Koepel Hall and, 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 and Spore Zone. The, the way Walter has been pushing the boundaries for so many years, I'm convinced that, um, that he'll, he'll carry on doing so. And I think the festival will carry on being the leader in, in that sense. I think Roadburn is doing something right because they're presenting this format in, in, in a very accessible way. There's gender, finance, uh, social status neutral. I only see it getting bigger. I think that the interest in sort of heavy and more experimental music is growing currently. It seems to be expanding quite a bit. Yeah. And I feel like involving more, just more art in general. Uh, it's something that sort of transcends just being about music. You know, it's not just a sort of, you know, bands playing 40-minute sets, walking away. Bands want to do something special. 
people want to be something, be part of something special. I think it's just going to keep, you know, staying the same but getting better. Um, you know, the older all the bands get, it'll be more a novelty once they're older, they'll probably come back and I don't know, I, don't, I hope it doesn't change its direction radically. Well, that's entirely up to the founders, I suppose, because at the end of the day, they're the true compass of this, right? So they, they even curate the curators. All of this is their art. You know, this is, this is their statement, the collection of things, the collection of ideas, the collection of creative people, um, collection of, you know, powerful musicians. Uh, I would think that it's just going to continue to, you know, diversify, if, that, if that's the best word to, to use for it. It's talked about in extreme high regard and, you know, it's something that like everybody who plays heavy music or enjoys heavy music hopes to one day be able to do, as far as I know. They've, you know, really intelligently placed new acts and introduced that to, um, you know, the the core crowd in a, in a really good way. It, it continues to challenge and, and its own borders, basically, transcending yourself. That's, that's the, the way to survive, I guess, in this, this business. Whether or not you're a festival or an artist. Dark, emotional music uh, is always expanding and is always evolving, and there's lots of room uh, within that spectrum for a lot of sounds and a lot of ideas. But that's, that's where the courage again comes in. Uh, the courage of, of always wanting to grow or always wanting to try out new things and, and being, the, being out there, seeing what happens. And so as long as uh, people keep an open mind, then I, I think that the, uh, the, the festival will continue to, to grow.